Shalom, brothers and sisters and family. Shalom. Welcome. I'd like to welcome my almost 15,000 Facebook followers and also my YouTube subscribers. Welcome. Shalom, Israel. This includes you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, those of the diaspora dispersed throughout Africa, India, Europe, Asia, and the islands, those of the sub-Saharan, and the transatlantic slave trade. Today's topic is Israelites have always been a rebellious brood. Let me say that again. Israelites have always been a rebellious brood. And it's included today. We are still rebellious today. The Israelites have, have had a reputation ever since the beginning of being, rebel, of being, of being rebellious. Rebel against our Elohim, his son, our brothers and sisters, and our nation. We are only playing into the hands of the Antichrist. The Apostle John showed us in the scriptures two types of Antichrist. And we're going to go over these two types of Antichrist that the Apostle John showed us in the scriptures. The first Antichrist, a rebellious Israelite. Let's start at 1 John 2 and 15. First John, verse 2, 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You Israelites, the Most High God tells us to don't love the world or the things in the world. If you do, then you do not love the Most High God. That's, that is a, that's how you determine where you stand with the Most High God. Do you love the world to the point where the things that he tells you to do in this Bible, do you do those? Or you do what the world tells you to do or what the world offers you? Let's continue on. Second John. No. First John 2 and 16. For all that is in this Say it we, again. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. For all that is in the world. Now see he's telling you all the things that's in the world, read those ingredients again. The lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes. Lust of the eyes. And the pride of life. All inclusive. Come on. Is not of the Father, but is of the world. The, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the things in the world are categorized as one. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes. That's two. And three. Pride of life. The lust of the flesh. All sins of the flesh fall under this category. Adultery, whoremonger, men with men, women with women, pedophilia, bestiality, sleeping with closest of kin, etc. The lust of the eyes, all manner of covetousness, covetous sins fall under this category. Stealing, killing, lying, embezzlement, selling drugs to your people, prostitution, etc. And the pride of life involves the things you obtain to impress others like a very expensive house, 10,000 square feet and only one person living in it, very expensive cars, jewelry, clothes, just to impress others. These represent the things of the world, not of the Most High God. Let's continue on. First John 2 and 17. Now, this is not to say that you can't have these things as, as a saint. Somebody's keeping the commandments. There, there, there are ways to have those things, but if you are doing everything to break the most and breaking the most high God's commandments to get those things, then you loving the world because you're not giving a damn about the most high and what he tells you to do. He's not telling you that you can't have these things because our forefather Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they all were wealthy men. Y'all missed the boat when y'all think that most High God said we can't be wealthy. He's just saying you can't love the world more than you love him. Now, let me hit you with a scripture. I think it's in first Timothy. I think it's gonna be like the sixth chapter in like the Hmm. Y'all get your Bibles out. 
sixth chapter and seventeenth verse and eighteenth. Charge them that are rich. We we'll charge them that are what? That are rich. So, so the fact is, most like God said that you can have possessions. Charge them that are rich. Come on. That they would. Well, come on, continue to read. Read that again. That they be not high. Uh, right? Charge them. That are rich in this world. So in this world. So we're talking about the things of the world. Okay, come on. That they be not high minded, nor trust in uncertain riches. But in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. So he said, charge those that are rich. So once you get rich, you got to understand your position if you still worship the most high God and you love him above all things. Come on, continue on. Verse 18. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute. Ready to do what? To distribute. Because that stuff don't belong to you just because you got it. The most I God bless you so that you can bless others by doing good works and, and, and distributing to your your brothers and sisters of the things that they need, if what, not just individually, but the things that your community need or your family need. You don't need to go out and buy a 25,000 square foot house and only you living in there. What about your family, your immediate family? Everybody don't want to live in your house, but if you bought, if you bought amount of acres of land. Let's say you bought 20 acres of land and you put all of your family out there and you built them houses. You ain't got to build them big houses, but you build the houses so everybody live together. You, you got fences, everybody in the same fence so that all the kids and stuff can play together. All your family that can play together. You can self-teach all your kids. Then you can bring other people in that are Israelites just like you. All of them in the same family. Charge the rich, ready to distribute. Come on, ready, willing to communicate, and willing to communicate with their brothers and sisters. So the Most High God is not saying, "Oh, just because you got stuff that you of of the world, being of the world is not obeying His commandments and getting that stuff, violating His Sabbath days, and willing to do that all the time, not caring about it. You know, going out partying on His Sabbath day." Dominic, pay attention. Now, now we're so so. I just wanted to clear that up. First John two and seventeen. Let's come continue on. First John two and seventeen. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abides. And the what thereof? Come on, read that again. But he that doeth no start two and seventeen again. And the world passeth away. In the lust thereof. And the lust of the world pass away. Come on. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Because all of this stuff passes away, there's not going to be any of this stuff around. All this lust and stuff that y'all after, y'all don't have no thoughts of that lust when the most I got when the Messiah returns. It, that's going to be the farthest thing from your mind. Some big big booty a woman. Because at, at that time, it's going to be number fear on this on this planet, on this plane. You won't be thinking about no big booty woman. Oh, uh, have to go hit this this girl and that girl. You, that ain't gonna be a thought in your mind about that. Ain't gonna be no thought in your mind. Gotta go get this paper. That's not gonna be a thought in your brain that this that talk about going and get money. So let's get the the time when that, all of these things in the world should, will pass away, and those who are about that life will be destroyed with it. Those who that remain are those keeping the commandments of the Most High God. Let's get let's get Zechariah thirteen and eight to, to to verify that point, to solidify that point. Dominic, read that Zechariah thirteen and eight. And I shall come to pass that all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third part shall be left therein. What is that referred to, Dominic? That two thirds will die. Two thirds of what? Look, speak up. I, I I don't need you talking low. Two thirds of the Israelite people will die. Yeah, because if, if, if he's talking about anybody else, no. he's talking about two thirds of us. In in this time, should be cut off. Be, should should die. Be dead. He's gonna kill us. That's why that's that's why we're gonna be cut off because he's gonna put us to death. And the one third that is keeping his commandments are gonna survive. Let's continue on First John two and eighteen, Jordan. 
1 John 2 and 18. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Apostle John was telling the saints something that Christ, Apostle Paul, had informed them that the Antichrist shall come. Let's see who they were referring. Continue on. Let's first John two nineteen. They wait for out from us, but they were not of us. Now he's talking about the Antichrist. This is this is giving you the identity of the Antichrist. Read that again. Continue read it. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest, that they were not all of us. Now what is that referring to, Jordan? Read what it's saying and, and what is that referring to? <coughs> um. <coughs> what the, what is it referring to? That. Nothing you can help him. They went out from us. So that that gives you an indication that they was once what? They were once with us. But they were not of us. That gives you an indication of what? They were of you by what what does that mean? They were part of the tribes. Yeah, they were part of the tribes, but they didn't believe what you believe. They were just playing that trickery role, like corn and tail pro negroes. That sit around and they, they break bread with you and stuff, but they ain't with you. They just sitting there with you, but they not with you at all in thought, in spirit. For if they had been of us, if they if they was brothers like you are, loving your brother as you love yourself, they would they would no doubt have continued with us. They'll still be with you. So these were wicked Negroes that was with you pretending that they was with you but they weren't these are the things that y'all as as y'all grow up these are the things that y'all need to be weary of when y'all call people your friends because a lot of people going to come around you but they're not going to be of you they're not going to be with you or thought with you these antichrists sat, broke bread, studied with us but the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life was too great for them. They could not overcome it. So they left. Because they wanted what was in the world. Look at John 6.63. This is what Christ said. Come on. John 6.63. It is the spirit that quickened it. The flesh profited, profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. See, the fact is, what what John is telling you is love love uh love not the world or the things in the world. The Christ told you telling you the same thing with this. He said, It is the spirit that changes. There's no profit in the flesh. So the, it ain't no profit in the pride of the eyes. You know, the, the uh the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, it ain't no profit in that. Because the things that that you about in this Bible, in this walk, is it's it's of the spirit. There's no profit in the flesh. The most like the, the Messiah was telling you that. Christ was telling the disciples that it is the spirit that changes. The flesh does not profit, meaning the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life has no profit in the Bible. So your pastor gaining the congregation to live live a pimped out life, it's not of the Holy Spirit. He collecting all this money every doggone sa uh, Sunday. Living a pimped out life, that ain't of the spirit. Because the, the, the Messiah, the, the, the person that he's preaching about, said the spirit that is the spirit that changes, the flesh profit nothing. So the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, of that money and stuff that you that you lusting after, it you it's not a profit for you if you are in the spirit. Continue on John six sixty four. 
John 6, 64. But there are some of you that believe not, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. The Messiah knew that there were antichrists walking among him. These were those Cointel pro negroes, Jews, walking walking with him, but reporting to the Romans, elders and scribes, to betray Christ. Let's get Matthew sixteen, twenty one. Dumb to read that. From that time forth began Jesus. that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples uh, that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. He knew those that were going to betray him. The people that betrayed him were the people that were walking with him, calling themselves disciples. Because the fact is, people just think uh, Christ had more than 12 disciples. There was a lot of people calling themselves disciples walking among Christ. But when he started talking like this, they couldn't walk no more. They were like, you know, I don't believe this. Man, let me get my butt out of here. I don't believe this crap. We have that, these same rebellious Negroes walking among us today. Christ told us we would. Continue, Matthew 24, 9. Let's read that, Dominic. They shall then shall they deliver you up to the afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for thy name's sake. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Who are the day? These are the Cointel Pro Negroes delivering their own up to the to that so called white man. Who delivered um, Marcus Garvey? Cointel Pro Negroes. Who delivered up Mal Martin Luther King? Cointel Pro Negroes. Who delivered up Malcolm X? Same thing. Cointel Pro Negroes. We shall be hated of all nations for for my name's sake. That's what Christ said. What does this What does this mean? The so-called white man is not the only nation that hate us. You look in the regions in Africa where we are they are mass murdering our people every nation hate us why Genesis 32 and 8 32 and 28 I meant Dominic read that and he said a name shall be called no more Jacob but Israel for the prince that has, has thou power with God and with men has prevailed we are the people the children of the most high God don't you know that your slave master took away your name of Israel, Judah, Yah, etc.? This doesn't eliminate the fact that they know you are the children of the Most High God. They know that. They took that name away because they didn't like the fact that we are the children of God. Alright, Jordan, continue reading Matthew 24, 10. And then <clears throat> shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Don't many of you lost sheep who love the world, the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life? Don't you get offended when someone tells you the words of Christ that changes only the spirit and does not, prop and does not profit the flesh? Don't we hate one another, selling drugs to your people, destroying them? That's a hateful act. Prostituting our women for lust of the eyes, to get money and live a prideful life? is a hateful act. Drive-by shootings, killing over colors, skin lightening, blonde hair and hair relaxers, all are hateful acts towards yourself. Sinful. Here's the violation against God and your people. Let's get Leviticus 19 and 17, Jordan. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. You shall not hate your brother you shall correct your neighbor, which is your brother, and not suffer sin, not suffer him to sin. This is where your enemy placed himself as your neighbor. Your enemy is not your brother or your neighbor. The so-called white man, Chinese, Japanese, Arab, etc., these are not your neighbors because they are not your brother. Continue on, Leviticus 19 and 18. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Your brother, neighbor, is the children of your people. 
This does not include any other nation. You're supposed to love thy brother, your neighbor, or the children of your people as thyself. Neighbor, in this instance, does not mean another nation who lives in your community or next door to you. Let's continue on John 6:65. 6, mm. He said, "Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father." Okay, so this is this is a very telling thing. Just because you want to come to Christ, you can't come to Christ unless the Father sends you. The Father orders your steps. Christ is telling you right here. Read that again. Mm. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me, except it were given unto him of my Father. All of you so-called Christians, you can't come to Christ unless you are led by the Father. The Most High God will lead you to Christ. Let's get Romans 8 and 13. Romans 8 and 13. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye, if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. If you live after the flesh, which is the lust of the, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, then you should die. If your spirit is quickened or changed, through the words of the Bible, and you subdue, which is mean mortify, you subdue your flesh, then you should live. This is this is the thing what Christ was saying. It is a spirit that changes. If you live of the spirit, you live of the laws, and not of the flesh, which is the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, then you'll live if you live after the after the spirit. Let's continue on Romans eight and fourteen. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. Okay, so as the Messiah said in John 6, 65, no man can come to him except he be led by the Father. All, all the apostles knew this. His apostle uh, Paul speaking about it now. Let's continue on with Romans 8, 15. Romans 8, 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but, to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Okay, continue on. Romans 8, 16. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Because if, if it bears witness with, uh, with, if you bear witness with this Bible, that is how you are led to the Father. So Christ told you that you'll be led to the Father. Only way you accepted of he is you accepted of him if the, if it's if it leads you by the father leads you in and, and the way that you're being led to the father is by you being you accepting the words in this Bible and it tells you that you are a son of God a child of God if you're not accepting of this Bible you're not a child of God point blank simple as that uh, you know these are the instructions these are the things that is written in this book. I'm just I'm just laying them out. So you know, some of you people tomorrow, well, I accept some of this stuff, and I don't accept anything. That's fine. Christ has not chosen you. If in due time He does, then you know, congratulations. But the fact is, when you were like that, well, I don't accept this, and I don't accept that. Christ telling you that you're not, you can't come to Him unless the Father leads you. And right here in Romans eight and sixteen, what do, read that again. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And where we get that spirit from, Jordan? Hmm. What? Where, where we get the spirit from? Christ said it. John six sixty three. Yeah, but, but 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 what Christ said in John six sixty three, you you're actually correct. That's how the Spirit itself bear witness with your spirit that you're a child of God. But John six sixty three tell you what the Spirit is. Read it. It is, it is the Spirit that quickened it. The flesh profiteth nothing. For so the spirit that quickened it, that changes, the flesh doesn't profit. Because nothing in this Bible has nothing to do with flesh. Come on. The words that I speak unto you. The what? 
The words that I speak unto you. What words are you talking about? The Bible. Yeah, the words. The words in this Bible that I'm talking to you about, what? Is what? They are spirit. They are spirit. The, so the things about it, it, it's like I said, the fact is, if you're not keeping the commandments, this stuff is going to be rough for you. It's going to be things that I'm talking about right now, a lot of y'all don't understand in this plain as day to me. It's, it's plain as day. Because the fact is, the Messiah told you what the Spirit was. The Apostle Paul came to you and said, it's the Spirit bearing witness with our Spirit that we are the children of God. Because God led us through His Word. And we believe in his word we didn't die when he said a woman shall not wear that which pertaining to a man neither shall a man put on a woman's garment oh that was back then we didn't do that we didn't we didn't we didn't gawk at when he said and the swine do be cloven footed chew it, but it chew it not to cut it is unclean to you we didn't stop at that We didn't say, oh, you know, that was then. Now, you know, they, 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 they just give pork now with, they give it corn and feed it just corn and, uh, grains and stuff. It's good to eat now. And we, we didn't say that. So, you know what? Anytime y'all, y'all speak against this Bible, against the Word of God, I, th I think you're foolish anyway. Cause most of God calls you fool. If you're led by the Father to Christ, let the law change your spirit then. Your spirit bears witness that you are a child of the Most High God. And you are an Israelite. How do I know this? I have a few scriptures. Let's get Isaiah 42 and 8. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another. So he's telling you right there. Continue on. Now that my praise to graven images. He ain't giving his glory to another or his praise to a graven image. This is how... I know if your spirit is being led to the most high God, I don't give a damn what color you are, what complexion you are. I don't give a damn if you look white, white. But if your spirit is being led to this Bible, it's something in you that 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 is of, of the most high God. Because he's not gonna give his glory to another. This is not a you know, you gotta be black as as tar tar baby black because the, the the Most High God said in uh, Jeremiah 12 and 9 that my people unto me are like a speckled bird. What's a speckled bird? You're going to have, our, our people going to have many different colors because all the captivity the Most High God put us in, don't you know that we were you're lightened by that? Our color got lightened? By the rapes in the the, all the things that, that we had to suffer through all of these different captivities, he know what color we are. So the most high God was like give his honor, a recognition, a glory to another nation. So all that are led by the Spirit are all Israelites. Joel two twenty seven. Read that. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. So, he's telling you right there. So, if you're led by the Spirit, you are an Israelite, because the Most High God is telling you in this word, you're going to know that I'm in the midst of Israel, and I'm the Lord your God, and what? And none else. It ain't nobody else's God. He, he, he belongs to nobody else. He's not going to give anybody else his Spirit. Be assured of that. The Most High God is the Elohim of Israel and none else. Let's continue. Romans 8 and 17. And if children, then hairs, hairs of God, and joint hairs with Christ, and so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. If the Most High God led us to Christ, and we are His children, then we are joint heirs with Christ. If we suffer for Christ, 
sake, then we are glorified together. Let me show you when we are glorified together. Because the Bible tells you when we are glorified together with Christ. Y'all don't know that? Y'all don't know the Bible tells you that? When you are glorified with Christ? It does. Let me show you. Let's get Revelations 2 and 26. It's going to show you when you are glorified with Christ. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give the power over the nation. Give you what? The power over the nation. Now, I'm going to ask this question before I go into, to, you know. Now, for you Christians, so-called Christian people, if everybody can be saved, what nations is he talking about? Is he just going to bring some nations with him when they come so that we can have power over? Or are those nations going to be already here? Because I don't think he's going to bring nations with him that we can have power over. I think the nations that he's talking about are going to be still the people living on the earth. He said, if you overcome and do my work and keep my commandments to the end, I'm going to give you power over the nations. What nations are you referring to if all people can be saved? Can anybody tell me? Sorry, what nation? Israel. No, he's going to give us power over Israel. No, he's going to kill all the wicked Israelites. Ain't going to be but, but one third left. That's one thing about Israel, Israelites that y'all need to understand. Most High God is going to save those nations that didn't kill us and put us in, in captivity it you know it like like in revelations uh 13 and 9 and 10 he that lead in the captivity that shall go into captivity those people gonna go into slavery he that killed with the sword must be killed with the sword those people that killed us with the sword their, their ancestors and stuff that killed us with the sword they go they must be killed with the sword but those that led us in the captivity going into slavery now us on the other hand we ain't gonna have that those that didn't want, don't want to follow him He's going to say, bring them to me and, to, and, and, slay them, and slay them before me. Those who, who don't think I, that, that I could, should reign over them, bring them before me and I will slay them, slay them at my foot. So the Israelites are not going to have that problem. We're going to get slayed. It's going to be either you do or you die. That, that's, that's the options Israelites have. Right, that's a hard option, but you know what the Most High God told us this is this is the kingdom is only for you but you so hard headed and you don't give a damn about the kingdom you think you think more of this kingdom God hates you for that alright if you overcome your trials and keep the keep the commandments to the end then Christ return when Christ returns you will be glorified with Christ you'll be given power over the nations According to the so-called Christian doctrine that most of you have been indoctrinated, you believe that every nation can be saved. Then if everybody can be saved, then what nations will the Israelites be given power over? Let's continue on. Revelation 2.27 And he shall rule them with the rod of iron, as the vessel of the potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Now, see, if, if, if anybody understand things about Sin the structure and all of that stuff. You would understand that he was talking when he said, "Even as I received of my of my father, he was talking about the power over the nation. You'll be given power over the nation, even the, the same power that I received of my father. So you're gonna be glorified. That's being glorified with Christ as an heir, because he's giving you the same power that Christ have when he come back." What kind of power does Christ have when he come back? Is he going to be just a, nor a, a normal man? No. That's the same kind of power we're going to have. If you, if you overcome and keep the commandments, you're going to have the same power. You're not going to be a normal man. You ain't got to worry about going anywhere. You go anywhere by yourself on the earth then. And know that you have more power than anybody in, in, in the whole area. You're going to have that kind of power to break everybody up in the city into shivers if, 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 the, if, the, if the Most High God, if the Messiah tells you to go over there, bust all them people up. Because I told them to do this and they didn't do it. They're not keeping the commandments over there. They're not, they're not worshiping on the Sabbath day. You, if you want some help, let me know, but I think you can do it by yourself. Go in there by yourself and bust everybody up. Sure thing, Father. Thank you. Sure thing. 
I'll go in there and bust them all up. Be back before lunch. Now, the Israelite that keeps the commandments until Christ returns will rule the other nations with a rod of iron. We will have the same power that Christ received from his Father. That's where we become joint heirs. Let's continue on John 6.66. From that time of his disciples went back. Oh, we go. Come on, read that again. From that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. So, these disciples were not led by the Spirit of the Most High God. So, they were walking with Christ, but the fact is, when, when the words got too heavy for them, they couldn't take it. They they walked, they left. And they walked no more with him. Alright, come on. John 6, 6, 67. It said, Jesus unto the twelve, will ye also go away? So that tells you that it was more than twelve disciples that was with Christ did. It was a lot more disciples when 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 Christ starts speaking about the spirit and stuff like that that changes you and, and that your flesh don't profit. See, they thought there was some profit in, in in them being with him of the flesh that they were gonna get money and riches. But when they found that that out, they were like, man, they ain't got time for this. That's like a lot of people, you know, they join organizations to do what? Get paid, get money. So when they found out that there was no money to get, oh, like, I gotta go, man. And Christ asked the, asked the twelve, y'all leaving too? Let's see what they said. John six sixty eight. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. See, I'm just like Simon Peter. Right now, if somebody tried to, you know, make me go into any other religion or any other detail or go back into the world, where am I going to go? What, where would I want to go? What, where would I go? I, I've bitten this fruit. And I've bit, bitten, bitten this fruit for, uh, for a while. And now, where the hell am I going to go? It, 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 it'll be like I'm lost because I'm not with Christ. I'm not with, I'm not with the angels. I'm not, with, uh, I'm not a line on the right side. Where am I going to go? If I've been in this, if I've been in this too, and, and and somebody tell me that you know have this pork chop sandwich, it ain't gonna hurt, man. Just 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 loosen up some and, ha and just take a bite. It's good, you know. I, I I don't even understand how people can do that. I'm I'm with Simon Peter here. Look, wh where am I go? We we've been walking with you. We we we've, we've seen some things. We've learned some stuff. What we gonna do now? We 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 already know this stuff. We can't we can't go nowhere else. Ain't nothing out in the world for me. Come on, let's continue. John six sixty nine. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the Living God. Simon Simon Peter, believe as I believe. Continue on. John 6, 7, Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and not one of you is a devil? The Messiah knew one of his disciples were, was a deceiver, which is a devil. However, when we choose brothers and sisters, we don't have that knowledge. How can we know? John six seventy one. come on. He spoke of Judas Is Iscariot, Iscariot yes. the son of Simon, for he was... For it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Christ knew the devil that would betray him. Marcus Garvey didn't know his betrayers. Neither did Martin Luther King, Jr., Malcolm X, or Fred Hampton. None of them knew that that there were Corinthian Pro Negroes sitting at the table next to them, betraying them. These are the Antichrist Israelites among us. The second type of Antichrist, so-called white man. Dominic started First John two and twenty one. Jordan, read. Jordan, read. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, 
who is a liar, but he that denied the Son of Jesus is the Christ. Where you at? First John two twenty two. No, two twenty one, read that again. I have not read it unto you, because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and not and no lie is of the truth. Okay. Come on. Who is a liar, but he that denied that Jesus is the Christ, he is Antichrist, and denied the Father and the Son. Let's dig deeper into who Apostle John is calling a liar. See, because the fact is, most of y'all who read these Bible, read this Bible, there are words like that. You you know, like okay, who used to call him a liar? Is it, his spirit got got to ask these questions? Okay. Who's a liar? Who's he calling a liar? There's gonna be some. There's gonna be some evidence in the Bible who that liar is. So we're gonna go into the evidence. Let's 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 start at Titus first, uh, uh, one and ten. For there are many and really and vain talkers and deceivers. Especially they of the circumcision. Just like there are today many unlearned, lying, money hungry pastors, especially of the so called blacks, of the Jews, of the circumcision. That's that's what the circumcision were. They were the they were the so called Jews. But you keep your your spirit be in this Bible, you'll continue, you'll learn and understand that just because they were calling themselves circumcised and stuff and were following the laws of uh, Abraham, they didn't really know the law. Because when the Messiah came, he had to reteach everybody in Jerusalem the law again. They didn't know the law. Because, you know, the law had been watered down and watered down and watered down to the point where nobody knew what the hell they were doing in Jerusalem. All right, come on. Titus 1 and 11. Whose, month, whose mouth should, must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not not. For filthy lucre's sake. These pastors' mouths must be stopped. They sabotage whole churches. Creflo Dollar said you don't have to keep the Ten Commandments. He was teaching it for filthy lucre's sake. No, because grace catch you. You don't have to keep the ten. you don't even have to keep the ten. I was, I know I, I freaked a lot of y'all out when I said that. I I fought a video. Oh, Grace got you right here. You don't have to keep the first you don't have to keep the matter of fact you don't even have to keep the ten, big ten. So, the fact is, yeah, for filthy lucre, that subvert whole houses. Let's continue on first, uh, Titus 1 and 12. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own. This would be like Crefo Dollar because, you know, right now they say he's a prophet. One of themselves, they're talking about one of these of the uncircumcised, of the circumcision. One of themselves, even the prophet. Of their own, which would be like a Creflo Dollar or T.D. Jakes or somebody. Come on. Said, the Cretans are always liars. Okay, the Cretans are always liars. Come on. Evil beast. Evil beast. They're talking about a man. We ain't talking about a, a, an animal. So, when you see the, the four beasts, we're talking about a people. The Cretans. Slow bellies. Apostle... Paul left Titus with the Israelites scattered in Crete. Check this. A so-called prophet of these unlearned, lying, money-hungry pastors, even they said the Cretans are always liars. Who are the Cretans? Evil beasts. The Most High God calls them beasts here. So when the prophet Daniel and John the Revelator were describing beasts, they were talking about Esau. Let's understand who the Cretans were. Cretans, a native are inhabited of the Greek island of Crete. So, even the Jews among ourselves who were circumcised but was teaching all kind of lying doctrines, they even call a white man uh, 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 always uh, always a liar. It was an evil beast. Did all kind of uh, 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 dirty things. So, when when John was talking about called uh, called them liars, he was talking about Esau. Let's continue on. Here's more proof. Okay, Cretans were Edomites, even to the standards of the unrighteous among us. They were liars. 
the more you read the scriptures, you will understand that all the negative connotations that Esau says about our people, they have transferred from themselves. Because they always call us liars and lazy and all this other stuff, but they transfer that from themselves upon us. That ain't us. We, we don't work for free for 400 years, but and they got the audacity to call us lazy. Mm. Imagine that. You know, they them pulling themselves up by the bootstrap. I learned that the government was giving them 160 acres. They just worked it off of a few years, and they gave them 160 acres for free. And we got they, we got a task to ask them for 40 acres in a mule, one fourth of what they were getting for free. 160 acres of land they gave almost every white person that much land about in, 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 in America I, I don't understand how most white folks are, are, are don't don't have nothing because you know you know like uh, Paul Mooney said when he see a see a, a homeless white man on the street he just start crying you know because why the hell you 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 homeless in your own in your own kingdom this is your heaven you should not be hung. You you you've gotten everything. You've given land, taking it from the Native Americans and given land. All right. Let's let's prove that the you know all these negative connotations they have on us. Come on, let's let's get read Hebrews twelve and sixteen and seventeen. Dominic. All right. Let there be. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person that's Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. A profane person is unbelieving, disbelieving, godless, uh, ungodly. Esau believed in illicit sexual acts. A fornicator, uh, you know, because he believed in illicit sexual acts. You know, sleeping with dog animals and, and clothes of kin and, and all kinds of stuff. You know, inbreeders. Come on. Hebrews 12 and 17. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he taught it carefully with tears. Esau's birthright didn't mean anything that he gave it to Jacob for bloody meat in a stew. Esau's name was changed to Edom because he liked Red raw meat, as he does today. Genesis 25 and 30. Got that information. Because he liked red raw meat, and his, and his brother Jacob called him Edom, which means red. Because he liked, when Jacob was cooking this stew with beans and lentils, and then he dropped the, uh, the meat in, Esau liked to eat it when he dropped the meat in, and, and it turned the stew red. He didn't, want it to, he didn't want the meat cooked. He just wanted the red. That's why that's why Jacob called him Edom because he liked eating that stew when it was red and bloody. All right, come to you on Titus one and thirteen. This witness is true, wherefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in faith. This is why these so-called pastors who preach for filthy lucre gets no love from the Israelites. We are instructed to correct them hard. Or sharply. Come on. Titus one fourteen, come on. Titus one fourteen. Now giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. What does this mean? Jewish had a meaning during the time of the apostles. Let me show you who the Jewish were doing this time because you know, people would always use this this term in context of what today Jewish fables are. But this was written for that time. Don't give heed to Jewish fables. Let's get an understanding what that means. Because Jewish fables had had a meaning then. Let's get John eight and thirty one. Then said Jesus to Jews which believed on him. Now we go we go we're gonna go over this slowly because to the Jews that believed on him, who were those? Who were the Jews that believed on him? His followers. Who was his followers? The 
Yeah, but he was those his students. I, I, you could count them as his followers, but who was actually his followers? The Jews that believed on him. The Jews that believed on him. Israelites. Yeah, they were Israelites. They what what kind of Israelites? Because Jew is short for what? Judah. Okay, so that would include who? Who would they be? Judah, Benjamin, Levi. Judah, Benjamin, Levi. Those were the Jews. Those three, those three brothers, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, were the southern kingdom. Those Jews that believed on him. So all the Jews did not, did they have this belief in Christ? So what he said to those Jews that believe in him? Come on, John eight thirty one. Jordan, read. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. So if you continue believing in my word, studying my word, and you will be my disciple. Continue in my word. What, what is he saying? Because Jesus was instructing not only his disciples, but he was instructing a lot of people that followed him. If you continue in my word, then you be my disciples indeed. Okay. You see, there were Jews who believed in him. He told them, if you continue to learn my laws, then you will be my disciples indeed. Come on, let's read the, the most important scripture of all, John 8 and 32. And he said, another two, and the two shall make you free. He told you what the truth was in the, in the, first, uh, in the first one. The truth is, is, is his word, is his laws. Let's verify what the truth is. Psalms 119 and 142. Dominic, read. Where you at? Uh, 119, read. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law the truth. Don't ask me where, where we at, but you need to be with, uh, there where we at all the time. I told you to read. 119, 142. I don't need you to uh, uh, regurgitate it back. Dominic, shut up. John 8.33 They answered him, We be Abraham's seed. Okay. We're going to talk about the day now. Because, you know, Titus 1 and 14 say, Not giving heed to Jewish fables. Now, we're going to go to uh, John 8.33. They, the day answered him. Come on. read the, he, cause These are not the same people that Jesus, Jesus was talking to. Those Jews that he was saying, You, you continue my word. That you will be my disciple indeed. He's, it, this is a day. Let's see who these they are. We go, you, you should understand who the they are when you hear what they, their response was. Come on. They answered him. Come on. They in John 8.33 read up. They answered him. We be Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou? Ye shall be made free. They were not the same people that Christ was initially speaking with. These were the Jewish claiming to be seed of Abraham. True, Esau is the seed of Abraham. He is. He's true. He's the seed of Abraham. He's Jacob's twin brother. Romans 9 and 7. Read that. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. For in Isaac shall they be called thy seed. Read that again. Shall thy seed be called. Esau was also born of Isaac, but the Most High God elected Jacob before he was born. Romans 9 and 13. Come As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So we know he, he chose Jacob. So, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. So, the Most High God distinguished who are the children of God. Just because you're a seed of Abraham don't mean you're his child. Because Abraham had a lot of children. He had six kids by the Keturah. He had children by concubine that they're not mentioned. But he had a lot of children. Of the, of the two babies born of Isaac's seed, the Most High loved Jacob but hated Esau. 
these Jewish were claiming to be seeds of Abraham you know that this was not referring to Jacob because we have been in captivity to everybody here's proof that this is Esau observe how Christ responded John 8 37 I know that you are Abraham's seed. I know you're Abraham's seed. But you seek to kill me. You, you're trying to kill me. Because my word has no place in you. My word has nothing to do with you. That's why you're trying to kill me. You were trying to kill me as a baby. Yeah, like I said, he teamed up with, with, with his own people. Our own people helped the, helped the white man put Christ to death. Like, like our own people helped the white man put Marcus Garvey to death. Like our own people helped them put uh, Malcolm X to death. Like our own people helped them put Martin Luther King to death. The white man, the white man kills us by, with, with the help of our own people. Our own envious, greedy, un, you know, just unlawful people. They'll do anything for a dollar. And a pat on the head by the white man. I pray that don't let my kids be like that. Stand for something. Hell with a dollar. You know, give up give up your morals or give up all, everything you believe in for a damn dollar. Say your own brother out to get him killed for a dollar. This Bible, this Bible has context only for Israelites because the fact is, it all throughout the all throughout the history we have acted the same way, but we don't see it. The same way, generation to generation to generation, great men rise, great men get murdered by their own people's help, but their own people snitching and and telling the white man, yeah, he over there, yeah, this is what he said, yeah, he did this. Christ acknowledged, I know you Abraham seed, but you, you seek to kill me because this word has nothing to do with you. These were the Jewish in our temples during the period of Christ. This is why Apostle Paul was telling his people to not give in to Jewish fables. That turned you away from the law, like Christmas. The law is done away, Valentine's Day, Easter, etc. These are Jewish fables. Apostle Paul was warning us, don't give in to these things. Titus 1 and 15, come on. Unto the pure, the pure, all things are pure. Unto the pure, all things are pure, okay. But well, unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. Unto the spiritual, who have been changed by the words of God, all things are pure. However, to those who are in the world lusting after the flesh, lusting after the eyes, and in the pride of life, nothing is pure. A person who is living in the world, their thoughts and their mind is defiled. You in this world, you you got a defiled mind. It's going to be defiled by money or it's going to be defiled by flesh or lust. The pride of life. You know, your mind will be jacked up in, and I got to get this, I got to get this. So that when you go out and be seen of others that you're going to have a, a $30,000 worth, worth of clothes and jewelry on. And you and you gonna do anything that that have that status because that's all it is is status. You are gonna be in the circles where everybody everybody that got got something to show is, is at. You know, people driving up in one point one million dollar uh, cars and stuff just to bring it up to the place where everybody at, so everybody can oogle and all over you pulling up pulling up in a in a, in a million dollar car. Proud of life. All right, let's continue on. Titus 1 and 16. They profess that they know God, when in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. This is where most of you so-called Christians are today. They go to church every Sunday, not on the Most High God's Day. They eat abominable, dress abominable, fornicate, which is abominable, and pro profane themselves with worshiping of other gods. 
abominable foods, clothing, skin lightning, and blood and hair. However, to keep in the good works, let's verify what's good. Romans 7 and 12. But for the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. And keeping the laws and commandments, the good works, these people who claim that they, they know God are unprincipled, immoral, wicked, and corrupt. That's a reprobate. Come on, let's first John 2 and 23. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. All of you de deny the Son when you saw that the laws are done when you say that the laws are done away. The Messiah didn't lay down his life for you to be wicked. Let's get Hebrews 10 and 26. Okay. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there are made no more sacrifice for sin. If you willfully sin after you find out a law, the Most High God is not going to continue to use that blood of His Son to forgive you for that law, for that sin. Continue on. Hebrews 2, 10 and 27. But certain fearful looking for of judgment and fire indignation, which shall devour the adversary. In the day of judgment, you will you will have an extreme fear as Christ judged with fiery righteous anger. You who are willfully sinning, you are an adversary. Come on. Hebrews 10, 28. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Y'all got to understand what, 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 what the comparison is right here. Christ is saying, he's telling you, 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 you defied Moses' law, the law of Moses. Two or three witnesses said that, and you died. There was no, you know, forgive me, have mercy. No, it was none of that. If you were found to be breaking a commandment by two, two or three witnesses that said that they saw you, that was it. So you're gonna understand what that means to the to the Most High God in Christ, in 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 the blood, the shedding of the blood of His Son. In comparison with that, if you despise or violate the law of Moses, you die with two or three witnesses. Continue on. The Hebrews 10 29. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy, who have trodden under the foot of the Son of God, and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified, an unholy thing. And had done despite unto the spirit of grace. How much more punishment do you deserve for treading underfoot the blood of the Son of God? And you counted the new covenant as some unholy thing by sinning and then saying, You are under grace. Oh, I'm under grace. You know, I keep telling y'all every time, without, you know, when you talk about grace, there must be a debt associated with it. Because Grace doesn't just doesn't come out of the air by itself. Grace is associated with debt. Cause when right now in, in, in today's life, if you owe somebody and you call that person and say, you know what, I, I, you know I'm running short on cash this month, and uh, can I can I pay half the debt now, and I'll pay the other half in two weeks or uh, when I get paid again. And and if the person agrees to it. Then you under grace. He'll say, "Okay, I'll allow you to pay half of it now, and uh, in two weeks I expect you to pay the other half." Does that mean that you don't supposed to pay that bill? Because he gives you a grace period to allow you to to pay it in full in two weeks. No, he's just giving you grace period to say, "You know what? I'll let the debt ride. I'll let you pay it like like you said. But if you don't pay it, I'm cutting it. I'm chopping it off. I'm cutting it off." You know, your phone bill, your light bill, or whatever it is. So you, I don't see a, a receiver payment in two weeks. I'm giving you two-week grace period. And I'm cutting it off after this. With grace, there is debt always associated with it. So when it comes to your, your salvation and your soul, stop being so so uh, short-minded and stupid. I'm in the grace. But what debt you owe? All right, continue on. Uh, where we at? Hebrews 10 and 30. Okay, read. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belong unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. You see, 
I like to pair scriptures together. Listen to what Christ said. Matthew 7 and 21. Because you, all these people say that you're under grace. Listen to what Christ said. Now everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. For he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Okay. You people sin and claim to be under grace, calling on the name of Jesus. You are not getting into the kingdom unless you are doing the will of the Father. Let's see what the will of the Father is. Read that. Psalms 40 and 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law, thy law is within my heart. So what is the will of God? Thy law. The law. So if you're not doing the will of the Father, you ain't getting into the kingdom of heaven. You so-called Christians who are calling the name of Jesus the Christ but not keeping the laws and think you're under grace, you should not enter the kingdom of heaven. Come on, Matthew 7 and 22, continue on. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Okay, uh, these precepts are not just for the so-called Christians. But also for those in the truth, friends up, but still violating the law. You can hide your weakness from your brothers and sisters, but you can't hide them from the Most High. You wicked as hell, but you you walk around friends up and doing all kind, you know, you know, being all righteous around your brothers and sisters, but you are just as wicked as can be. That, that includes you too. Did not prophesy your name? Come on. Matthew, Matthew 7 and 23 And then will I profess unto them I never knew you Depart from me, ye that work iniquity The Messiah would tell you, tell you He never knew you I ain't never know who, who the heck you was Let's continue Hebrews 10 and 31 It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God Many of you don't realize this Who can protect you from the Most High God? Let me show you more rebelliousness. The Most High God told Judah to repent. Jeremiah 7 and 2. Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there, there this word and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. The Most High commanded Jeremiah the prophet to stand in the gate of the house of the Most High God where all Judah can hear. Because during that time, yeah, every Sabbath, we all went into the, to the house of the Most High God in the, in the area. So he told them to stand there so that everybody of Judah, all of Judah can hear. All right, come on. Jeremiah 7 and 3. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Jeremiah told Judah, the southern kingdom, to change your ways, keep my commandments, and I will allow you to live in the in this land. The most high God always sends his prophets before destruction. Let's read Amos three and seven to verify that. Amos three and seven. Surely the Lord God will do nothing when he revealeth his secret unto the servants of the prophets. The most high God revealed his secret to Jeremiah the prophet of what would happen if he did if we did not listen. So he told Jeremiah to go talk to them. Stand in the gate. Told him what to do. Told him where to stand. Told him what to say. Talk to these people. All right, come on. Okay. Jeremiah 7 and 4. Trust ye not in thy word. Say, the temple of the Lord. The temple of the Lord. The temple of the Lord are these. Israel was trusting in lying words of these so called false prophets, as many of you are. Are this day. These pastors are always focus on the building. They want a bigger building. Many of them take up donations for building funds for years. They are always worried about the building but not the people. Let's get Acts 17 24 to see if that's right for them to do. Dominic, read Acts 17, verse 24. God has made the world, all things therein, seeing that He is the Lord of heaven and earth. Well, not he don't dwell in temples made with hands. So the Most High God at this time does not dwell in a temple made with hands. 
The Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Come on. Jeremiah 7 and 5. For if ye thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if you thoroughly execute judgment between the man and his neighbor, our Father is basically giving us another chance to return to him. If we keep his laws, execute righteous judgment between our brother. Come on. If you express not the stranger, the fatherless, and well, the widow. Read that again. If you express oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your hurt. Okay. We're going to value this and compare it to what we do in our neighborhoods today. Oppress not the stranger. Who would these strangers be? Other nations? No. That that you know, strangers just like uh uh just like huh? A stranger to the law? No. Just say you living in 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 in, 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 the, in the neighborhood. Uh, let's say you live in. Uh, let's say you just moved into Oak Cliff. Now. Everybody your age living in Oak Cliff, been living there forever. But you just moved in yesterday. Would you be a stranger to them? Yeah. And the fact is, you get over in there, they're going to oppress the hell out of you. It's just as simple as that. No, most like he ain't talking about what, you know some other stranger people coming your your uh, vicinity. You treating you know, he ain't talking about that. He talking about you oppress. Of you, each other, you know, people that came probably from the from the northern kingdom, but they Israelites, and they come to your community, and you oppressing them because they, uh, you know, they not from your people. But we strangers ourselves in our own within our own self. You know, just because you black don't mean you ain't a stranger from somewhere else. Okay. The fatherless and the widow. Just y'all associate these with you don't oppress the stranger, you don't oppress the fatherless and the widows. Imagine this in our neighborhood. Most like God told us not to do that, but that's going on in our neighborhood today. The fatherless. You got you got girls and boys who have no daddies. They easily get put in gangs because their mama got to work or do something and she can't protect them from these gangs. They ain't got no daddy. You know, girl get hold out or whatever to be in these gangs. She got to do that. You oppress not the fatherless. That's girls and boys in these communities like that. And the widow. They can they, they you know they can't go to the mailbox and get their dog on uh, social security check. This is stuff going on in our neighborhood, and we wondering why why the white man is putting putting us down. Cause most I got is sending them against us because of, of all our wickedness and shed not innocent blood in this place. We was doing that then. Most I got told us not to shed innocent blood. We still are we shedding innocent blood today? We killing people over tennis shoes. You killing people because you don't like them. Because he said something to me. He disrespected me. What does that mean? White man disrespect your dumb ass every damn day. I ain't seen not one of you Negroes who, who shot your brother down go in there and, 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 and shoot a white man for disrespecting you. He come in your neighborhood and bust you upside your damn head, blood all over the sidewalk. Neither walk after other gods. We do that all the time. Every time I see see y'all, y'all throwing that goat horn up. Your Baphomets and stuff. 
y'all do anything just to get a dollar. You see, we had fallen away from the laws and commandments as we have done today in our communities. Don't we oppress those who are new in the community? The boys and girls of single parent households with no father oppressed? If the fathers were living with these children and involved in their life, their sons and daughters would not be part of a gang, killing, stealing, prostitution, selling drugs, gang violence, etc. Because the father was in their life and he was at the house in their life every day and, and, and everybody knew that father would be a stupid, crazy, crazy individual. Oh, he'd be like, man, y'all better leave that dude alone. And his kids too. Because he will come and kill all y'all. Let's get Isaiah 3 and 12 to, to back that up. Because the fact is, I, I, I'm, I'm practicing safe speech today because everything I'm talking, I'm going to back up with, other, with previous scriptures because people always think that, you know, he just talking about he ain't, he ain't got nothing to back it. I'm going to back up what I'm saying. And this was said long before. Now, Jeremiah just said it. Now, let's see what Isaiah said. Isaiah 3 and 12. Isaiah 3 and 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. For my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err. Because, and, okay. And destroy the way of thy path. Because there are no fathers involved in our children's lives. Our children are oppressing us in our communities. Women were never meant to lead the family. Just as Eve was convinced by Satan... Our women are easily persuaded by his seeds, that so-called white man. She, she easily, because uh, like that, he puts money before before her, and she, and she does what she do to survive. Let's continue on with Jeremiah seven and seven. Then will I cause you to dwell in this place in the land that I gave you to your fathers forever and ever. If Judah had repented and returned to the Most High God's laws and commandments, then we would still have our land. Did we listen? No. We didn't listen. Continue on. Okay. Jeremiah 7 and 8. Behold, you trust in my words that cannot profit. No, we did not listen. The Most High God's warning we were as we are today. We still trust in lying words. And as a result of these lying words, continue on. Lamentations 2 and 14. Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee, and they have not discovered thy iniquity to turn away thy captivity, but have seen for thee false burdens and causes of banishment. This is where we are today. Our preachers, pastors, bishops, reverends, etc., whatever you want to call them, are not showing us our sins, how we can repent and turn away our captivity, because we still in the same captivity. If we go into these churches every Sunday and they are not showing us our transgressions, our sins, and how to get out of that and, and, and get right with the Most High God, they are pushing prosperity in the world doctrine. That is not the prosperity of the Most High. Let's give you the prosperity doctrine that the Most High God gave us in the beginning, Joshua 1 and 8. Joshua. Mm -hmm. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. What, what, say it again. But thou shalt what? Thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Make thy way what? Prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. These so-called preachers, pastors, bishops, reverends, etc., what do they want to be called, are not teaching the laws, nor are they meditating in the laws to make the nation of Israel's way prosperous, not an individual's way prosperous. The Most High God did not remove us out of the land and put us into slavery for the iniquity of one, but for the iniquity of the many. Let's get, continue Lamentations 2 and 15. All that pass by, clap their hands at thee, 
they hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem, saying, is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? All the nations are shaking their heads at us. When you go into the, their stores in your communities with your pants below your butt, how far we have fallen? Let's, let, let me show you. Let me show you an instance when we were when when they cut our pants and when our butts hanging out and tore half our beard. And let's see how we felt. Let's read Second Samuel. 10 and 4. We fell a long way because now you willingly walk around with your ass out. Second Samuel 10 and 4. Wherefore, Hannon took David's servants and shaved off the one half of their beard. So he cut half of their beard off their face, come on. And cut off their garments in the middle. Cut the garments off in the middle. So what happened when he cut the garments off in the middle, Jordan? When he cut their garments off in the middle, what happened? Huh? Um... Their junk was showing. They bug was all out. Yeah, all of their stuff was being advertised in the in, in the in the news. Come on, all right, come on. And he said he cut the, cut that garments in the middle. Even what? Well, come on. Even even to their buttocks and sent them away. Yeah, he sent them away. Cut. Now get your asses up out of here. You, I'm gonna tell you. That's like me now tearing your pants off. It can't tear your pants in the half and it and, and all the way down to the middle and cutting your beard halfway off and just sending you outside. Now go on outside. An enemy of David, King David took David's servants and cut off half of their beards, which which he shaved which we shaved it all off, and he cut their garments down the middle where their buttocks will be shown. Let's get second Samuel ten and five. Samuel's ten and five. When they told it unto David, he said to meet them, because the men were greatly ashamed. They were greatly what? Greatly ashamed. Well, we walk around with our ass hanging out right now, and we ain't we have no shame about it. But but the, but these men were greatly ashamed because why? Why Dominic? Why were they ashamed? Because um, they all their parts were showing. They had to go in public, and, you know. They, they didn't. They got to change the clothes, but why were they still ashamed? What else did he do to them? You don't think they just walked around? Well, they cut off half his beard. Yeah. But we cut all our beard off all day, every day. They, did, they, they were ashamed to be seen as men. But right now, you Negroes don't even know what a man is. Well, how to look like a man. Now, because you're so afraid to be a man, you got all these other diff identification markers now. What do all these other things mean? You are binary. You don't want to be a man or a woman. You want to be something else because you you don't even want you you're afraid of what what a man's supposed to be. And then you want to get offended when somebody else don't call you that. If you got junk in the front, you know. If you got a penis and some balls, you a man. I don't give a damn what you think you are. You are male. You can you can describe yourself any other way you want, but you are male. All right. I right, continue reading that. Exodus seven ten and five. And the king said, "Tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown, and then return." So they were ashamed because their beards was half, half cut off. You know, the fact is, men don't understand what men are. You walk around with looking like a little, try to look like a little old girl with, 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 with no hair on your damn face. Don't be ashamed of yourself. Be 60 year old men think you, think you uh, 15 or uh, uh, 10. Walk around, no hair on your damn face. Look at foolish as hell. Real men see you and they like, that is a foolish ass man. Proverbs twenty one sixteen. The man that watereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. That's why I know that most of when you walk, when I see a man walking around with no beard on his face, I know you in the congregation of the dead. You are, you, you, you are spiritually dead. You don't know what a man's supposed to look like. 
I, I, I ain't never seen a, 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 a male lion look like a female lion unless it was young. When a male, when a male lion becomes of age, what do they have? Okay. They got a mane. I ain't seen one of them try to cut theirs off and, and, and start over and, and be a female lion. But you get, we got these crazy men, grown men, been on the earth for 50, 60, 70 years and they still shaving off their beard. When I see your pants below your butt, blonde hair, no beard, etc., I know you're unconscious. You are, and, and you know, people, you, uh, people be on the internet talking about stay woke. The one that says stay woke ain't woke either. Oh, he woke. No, he not. He still sleep thinking he woke. Lamentations 2.16. The wait. All thine enemies have opened their mouths against thee. They hiss and gnash their teeth. They say, We have swallowed her up. Certainly this is the day that we looked for. We have found. We have seen it. All of our enemies today have given you that that negative opinion of us. The Chinese compare us to monkeys. Every race think we are inferior to them. Well, the so called white man, you know how he feels about us. Though most of you love him in deeds more than you love yourself. Y'all love this white man to the point where you, 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 like I said, you will sacrifice everything for him but do nothing for yourself. And the things that you don't do for yourself is obeying your Elohim. You know, the fact is, the God, God of this Bible does not belong to nobody but you. And the white man tells you how to worship him, and and it and it does not belong to him. Anything coming out of his school, his seminary school and stuff, this is a god that doesn't belong to him. And I want y'all to get that in your head. This god of this Bible does not belong to the white man. It belongs to you. How in the world can he teach you about something that's not his? That's like him teaching you how to be black. Apparently he is. He's teaching a lot of y'all how to be black. Let's continue on. Jeremiah 79. Jeremiah 79. Because this is Jeremiah still trying to trying to get the children of Judah to act right so that they can remain in the land, but they ain't gonna listen to him. Come on. Will ye still will ye steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other gods whom ye know not? All of these sins we're committing in our communities right today. Stealing, murdering, committing adultery, swearing falsely, burning incense to all types of gods, all types of devils. You know, Valentine's Day. January, first, first of January, New Year's Eve, or whatever. All these are devils. Come on. Jeremiah 7 and 10. And come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered to do all these abominations. I'm under graves. You sin all week long. Commit adultery, fornication, all these things that Jeremiah said in, uh, uh, in Jeremiah 7 and 9. We do all these things week long. And then we go to church on Sunday, right? Just a den of robbers and thieves and murderers. This is what we do. We still do that today. We have, like, the fact is, we ain't changed nothing. We have not changed, you know, the Bible is a template that showing you our, our movement. We have not moved off of the things that we were doing then. So people are always talking about the white man this, the white man did that when he put us in slavery. No, he didn't. The Bible is showing you right now we were these wicked people before the white man came and put us into slavery. Yeah, we forgot our, we forgot our nationality, our tongues and stuff, and our language. But we were just we were these wicked people. We are the same wicked people we were before we before we went into slavery. We knew our we knew our language and stuff. 
We knew the things that we were supposed to be doing, but we weren't doing them. That was a, that's a difference between us now. At, at, during this time, we knew the things that we were supposed to do, but we weren't doing them. Now, we don't know the things that we were we supposed to do. We are being told, we told those things, and we don't know our tongue. But we knew all the things that we spoke, we weren't supposed to do then, and we knew our language. We didn't do them. So most like God basically said, you know what? Since y'all ain't doing what I told you to do, I'm taking your language, I'm taking all of that from you. Because if you look up above this in Lamentations 2, round 2 and 2 to 2 and 7, it tells you he took it from us. Okay. Lamenta yeah, Lamentations, yeah. Alright, com continue on. Now you you come and stand before me every every during during uh, like I'm saying during this time they were standing on the Sabbath day. Now they go to church on Sunday and they they claim to be standing before the Most High God. Doing what? Same old wicked stuff. You know, wicked all week long and then come and stand before the God like you know we we can do all these we under grace we can do all this abomination and Most High God still gonna love us. Titus 2 and 11. Let's see what grace teaches us. See, because the fact is, you know, this is what we do. We do all these abominations, then we go to talk about, I'm under grace. So, dumbly, let's read grace. Titus 2, 11 and 12. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. All men of Israel, come on. Teaching us that denying of godliness and worldly lust. Teaching us to do what? Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly What's lust. ungodliness? Not following the law. Yeah, teaching un to to deny things that are not of God. To 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 deny the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. To deny all of those things that are not of God and worldly lusts. The same things. Come on. We should live soberly. You, you, you can drink, but don't get drunk. Righteously. Keeping the commandments. And godly in this present world. In this present world. So it's not an outside type. Oh, we can't do those laws. Yeah, you can. When you are being taught, it takes time to learn. Within that time period, you are learning the laws. So you can deny ungodliness. That's how you deny ungodliness because in the time period that you are under grace learning the laws, it to teach those laws teach you the things that you should do and the things that you shouldn't do. So you can deny ungodliness, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. We should be sober. This doesn't include exclude drinking wine and alcohol, but not getting drunk. Let's let's get that proof. Ecclesiasticus 31 and 27. Wine is as good as life to a man. It's good to drink a darn glass of wine to a man. Come on. To be drunk moderately. If, if you drink it moderately, what moderately mean, Jordan? Let's take a, a, a fifth and just say, you know what? I got to knock this down right now. Open the bottle and just just cook, cook, cook. And then, you know, you, you put it down to the, it, it, on the table and you pass the hell out? It, 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 is, that, is that moderately? No. What, what is moderately? Like a little, or until your limit. Yeah, you you drink. You you know what gets you drunk. You don't want to be drunk. You want to be jovial, but not drunk. You want your nerves calm. If it's one glass of wine, you know. Okay, if I drink that the second glass of wine, I'm done. I'm I'm through. Two glasses of wine, you know, socially be it's good. I'm done. If if you are one glass shot a wine and say you know what one glass is good for me that's all I can handle good you know your limit you know now another brother might drink two glasses of wine he good he like man I'm good say I'm good I'm having fun you know I'm talking and everybody's everybody's cool but everybody has a limit and you ought to know what limit you are but just be out there getting drunk every day he said you live soberly come on. What life is then to a man as without wine, for it was made to make men glad. That's what wine was made for. 
Now, everybody in, this, in, these, in these different churches and stuff, oh, you can't drink. Drink, you know, whiskey and stuff was part of the tides. Wine is part of Here he goes in, wine me good to a man if you drink it moderately. If you ain't drinking it to get drunk. So, nobody tell you, oh, you don't supposed to drink. You know, well, you know what, y'all don't supposed to drink, but you know what, I'm going to have my glass. These CDs are scriptures that all y'all are supposed to know. So when you become an adult and you get some old foolish Negro talking about, man, you, you, know, you being sinful because you're drinking. Okay, show me that sin. I'll show you where it's not a sin. Well, it's, most like, it's the most like God say you can do it. It ain't a sin. All right, continue on. Jeremiah 7, 11. Okay. Is this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. Who is the biggest robbers in the church? Your so called pastor, preacher, bishop, reverend, etc., is robbing you. The most like God sees them robbing his people. Let's continue on. Because they're the biggest robbers in the church. He's a den of robbers, and he's the head he's the head robber. Jeremiah 7 and 12 But go ye now into my place Which it was in Shiloh Where I set my name at, it, at the first And see what I did to it For the wickedness of my people Israel What is he talking about here What is he talking about here Jordan Hmm That his people aren't in the original place anymore? No, no. Jordan, Dominic, you want to help him? Uh, See, this is, a, this is a big A warning. Now, at this time, Israel was in the Assyrian captivity. Now, he was warning them by telling them, I want y'all to go to Shiloh. I want y'all to see what I did to, did to my people Israel there, what I did to the land. Go over there and look at what I did to them people. What I did to the land. He was warning them by giving them an example to go look at. Go over there and look at what I did to them people. So, he telling them to go look at what I did to my people Israel. Israel was the northern kingdom. The ten tribes. All right, let's continue on. Jeremiah 7 and 13. Okay. And now, because ye have not done all these works, saith the Lord, and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but ye heard not, and I called you, and ye answered not. The most like God sent the prophets early in the morning, warning us. But we didn't hearken. We ain't want to hear none of that stuff. Come on, Ezekiel 3 and 7. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. You know, the fact is, the Most High God was telling the prophets, Look, I want, I'm going to send you, but they ain't going to hearken to you, because they ain't going to listen to me. So, I know they ain't going to listen to you, because they won't listen to me. They are hard-headed, stiff-necked people. The same today, we don't want to hearken to the voice of God. It doesn't matter who the Most High God sends. Jeremiah 7 and 14. Therefore will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein ye trust, and unto the place which I gave to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. The Most High God warned us that he was going to destroy us just as he did to the northern kingdom. Let's continue on. Jeremiah 7 and 15. And I will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out all of your brethren. Even the whole seed of Ephraim. The most I can the most I cast the northern kingdom into slavery out of his sight. Let's continue on. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry, nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Now the most high God has had enough. He told Jeremiah, Don't even pray for them. Don't cry for them, because I'm not listening to you. That's strong speech coming from our Elohim. 
This is what rebellion looks like. Let's continue on Jeremiah 7 and 17. See, it's down not what they do in the cities of Judah. Now he's going to show them something else. Come on. Okay. And in the streets of Jerusalem. Among all the murdering, killing, and robbing, we were doing something else that angered the Most High God. He's about to show Jeremiah. Come, continue on. Jeremiah 7 and 18. The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women ned their dough to make cakes to the queens of heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods, and they may provoke me to anger. The whole family all participated in this idolatry, making cakes to the queen of heaven, which is Astarte, Ishtar, or Asterit. She goes by a lot of other names. Isis. This, this God been around, and in, 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 in right now is present day, we call her Easter. So, the queen of heaven was basically the same God as Easter. Because that's the derivative of the God that they worship on Easter Sunday, right now. The, with the bunny rabbits and the eggs and all that, that that's going back to Nimrod and and uh, all of these other things. So we were worshiping a God that was not even ours. Let's see what the Most High God said about that. Come on, Exodus. Okay, so we were violating that law. The whole family all participated in this idolatry, making cakes to the Queen of Heaven, which is Aster, Ishtar, or Asterit. Let's get Exodus 20 and 3. Exodus 20 and 3. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Don't you understand why the Most High God is destroying us today in our communities? Why all of these tragedies are happening in our communities? Put your other gods away. Let's get to continue on Jeremiah 7 and 19. Do they provoke me to anger? saith the Lord. Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? The Queen of Heaven was a Hamite God. We still have a confusion of faces because the gods you are worshiping doesn't belong to you. They belong to other nations. We are making the Most High God angry because His name is jealous. Let's get Exodus 34 and 14. For thou shalt worship no other God, nor the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. His name is Jealous. The Most High God has another name, Jealous. He is jealous over His children. Just like a mother and a father jealous over their children don't make your don't it make you jealous as a parent when your child takes advice from everybody else except you Jeremiah 7 and 20 come on therefore thus saith the Lord God behold my anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place upon man and upon beast and upon the trees of the field upon man and upon what the beast okay and upon the trees of the field upon the fruit of the ground and it shall burn and shall not be quenched the most high God destroyed men, women, children, animals and the land for our rebelliousness it is evident comparing our actions today with our actions yesterday that we remain as rebellious as ever when will you wake up? the fact is you can say I'm woken all this stuff you ain't woke worth a damn you don't know nothing because the fact is, if you of the of, of the you are so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, those of the diaspora dispersed throughout Africa, Europe, India, Asia, and the islands through the transatlantic and the sub-Saharan slave trade, you ain't woke until you start understanding that who you are. Will you understand that you are a God and you're supposed to be above all nations, but because you're wicked, the Most High God is not going to have a, a wicked child above all nations when you are given the law to rule everybody. You are His children. You're born of His Son. You're going to be an heir with Christ. But you think you're going to be an heir with Christ, but you're worshiping other gods with the world. He's giving you the script to tell you how to know that you are of Christ or of the world. Because if you are loving the things of life, you know, the, the, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, you're not of Christ. Because money is the lust of the, of the eyes. 
and everything that money buys. If you're not considering the Most High God in, 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 in your walk, you know, in, in, like I said earlier, the Most High God is not saying that you, you can't be wealthy. He's just saying that you can't be doing, you're breaking his laws to be wealthy. You know, you, you, you're a drug dealer and you, and you know, you can't be breaking his eyes, you breaking his laws to be wealthy. You know, prostitution and stuff like that. Those, those are sinful things. You know, breaking his Sabbath all the time and, and willfully doing it. We just need to understand our rebelliousness and stop and, and, and adhere to the, the laws of the Most High God. Don't y'all want to be above all nations? Because I'm tired of being at the bottom. And you know, and you people talking about you too blessed to be stressed? And, and, and y'all don't know what living deliciously is. What would you say living deliciously is, Jordan? Hmm. See, if you had to think about it, you don't even know. Who do you think delicious living is, Dominic? Um, uh, Yeah, you know, but like I say, if you're thinking about it, y'all don't even understand what living deliciously is. You know, black folks thinking they 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 too blessed to be stressed because they bills are paid. You know, they got they got a, a house full of groceries and you know they got little pocket money to spend. But white folks, when I say you living deliciously, they got a yacht, private plane. Winter and summer homes, plural. So they could be they could be flown out into the mountains in, the, in their summer home and go ski in their, in their winter home and go skiing all all winter. Then when they want to go 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 on the beach, they got a beach house, beachfront property. They got when I say living deliciously, they got houses all over the, all over the place where where it's beautiful and it's always. You know the, the perfect climate for what they want to do. They got yachts. I'm talking. I ain't talking about no boat, rowboats and stuff. I'm talking about yachts, 150 foot, two, three hundred foot yachts. Well, they can. They have people employed to to to, to run these boats, to operate these boats. And the owner, yeah, it might cost a million dollars a month to, to, to run it and to operate it. Because those boats, you know, when you gas them up and put gas in them, you talking about 30,000 gallons of gas, maybe. 5,000 gallons of gas. A diesel. So it's going to cost a lot of money to, to, to put in, in, in the tank. Ain't no big deal with them. That's living deliciously. They got mobile homes. They might got two 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 yachts, two or three planes, two or three jets. Like John Travolta got like two or three jets. He 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 avid fly. He flies his own jets. And got a runway at his house and a docking station at his house. You know what a docking station look like when you dock on the plane. You, you remember the, the thing that we came off the plane on? To go into the to go into the run uh, go into the uh, airport. Uh -huh. He got one of those on his house. So when he when he uh, when he load on his house, dock on his house, he just go to his house and get, get on his plane. So I'm just saying, living deliciously. But anyway, I like to, again. I like to thank my almost fifteen thousand Facebook followers, and also I like to give thanks to my YouTube subscribers. I don't do much on YouTube any, anymore because you know uh, a few years back they said that my lessons were not appropriate for all users, so you know they basically kind of kicked me off their network. 
Uh, but I still upload my, my, my lessons and stuff on it. Uh, my Facebook page is the ad sign live L I V E Shabbat S H A B B A T class C L A S S all one word. Uh, my YouTube page is the live Shabbat class and there is all one word uh, feel free to like subscribe follow you can leave a comment now as I say all the time if you are not my of my nation if you're not an Israelite uh, of the so called black Hispanic and Native Americans those of the diaspora dispersed throughout Africa, Europe, Asia, and all of the islands, all of the lands. If you're not, if you're not uh, uh, of that nationality dispersed uh, through the sub-Saharan or the transatlantic slave trade, you're not my people. And you know, I don't feel free to to, to watch. You can like, but you know. For, for you to make any kind of derogatory comments or negative comments that's inappropriate for you because the fact is this is not actually for you don't, like I said, don't involve yourself too much more than the people that it's for I, I don't need your input now in fact you've basically done enough in, in my regards you've done enough enslavement and, and stuff like that to the point that I don't need your input in anything that that's about Israel. That's my stand on that. Why do I want to have my enemies to to come in on anything that I, that I'm doing in the rebuilding of my people? So your your help is not involved. It's not needed. You know, feel free to watch. I, you know, like I'm saying, I, I I have no control over that. But as far as you making your negative comments, especially if you're not my people, I'm gonna tell you, I I. I I do this, and like I said, I'll I'll do it, and I'll continue to do it. If, if you're not my pe my people, and you're making negative comments, I'm just going to ban you from my from my uh, page. I don't have no problem doing that because you know what? It's not for you, and you're just a busybody doing stuff that you shouldn't do. So, but anyway, with that family and friends, uh, this is this Savage class, and I like to say. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.